Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we've got Stephen Shaw and a slightly updated look. How you doing, Stephen? I'm doing well. I'm I'm digging the new look. Looks I I appreciate it. and and uh, you know I got some I got some great feedback from you and uh, and from so, wow so wow. fast already no <laughs> no delay whatsoever none at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, okay, we're going in strong. So, um, but yeah, so this this new look, uh, and I just noticed like I have a couple things to clean up, like that that corgi stampede just ended in empty space. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is super fun. We we kind of did this redesign sort of collaboratively in the 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 party corgi Discord, which was really fun. Um, and as you'll notice as i move around it's still kind of in progress so like certain screens are are moved over and certain certain ones aren't um but anyways that's not what we're here about so steven uh for those of us who aren't familiar with your work do you do you want to give us a little bit of a background uh sure so i uh am a developer at codepen i, I actually work on on codepen uh helping add new features fix bugs all that kind of stuff uh and i've been there for about a year and a half now uh, before that, I was at uh, at an agency doing agency work uh, for for clients, you know, creating fun websites, animations, uh, a few apps, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I do a lot of fun development on the side as uh, the keyframers uh, with my co-host David Korshid, um, and we do uh, kind of animation education. Uh, a tagline I came up with recently was animation education collaboration uh, because nice. we do it all collaboratively. We, we do uh, collaborative coding live streams. So it's, uh, it's rather fun. Uh, but yeah, you can find us at keyframe.rs there and we've got lots of uh, great content uh, uh, videos on, on YouTube and uh, some sweet merch, of course. Nice. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. Okay, excellent. Um, cool. So uh, today we're going to do something that is not like out of character for the show, but something that we don't do a lot of, which is is visual stuff. Um, so we've had a couple episodes, like we we just did one with Mandy Michael where we did variable fonts, and we've had Tatiana Mac on the show to do some some visual design kind of art direction. Um, but typically, this show is way more on the like code side. So we usually build something that does something fun, but it doesn't look very good. And and I thought it would be fun because you're you're such a good visual uh, visual dev. Like, what if we did something more visual and uh, and kind of played with that? And um, yeah, that that seemed to me to be like like a really fun way to to use our time today. Um, so, what do you think we should build today? Uh, well, we talked a little bit uh, about uh, the the party corgi stuff uh and and kind of uh expanding on your animations for that like kind of making those uh even even more fun because right now those are those are web animation triggers essentially mm -hmm. right yeah let me let me switch over so that we can we can play with these a little bit so um what we have now is we've got like when we use the corgi emote it pops up a counter in the top right of the screen and there it is um yeah. And then if we do like something like this, we pop that up in the bottom right. Um, so there's a, we, we've got a couple little things like that. And we had talked about a few things. I'm trying to remember what we had really gone into. Um, oh no. <laughs> yeah, so like we had talked about doing um, Wow. Wow. <laughs> Instant shade from the chat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Good. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, so we had talked about a couple things. So so one thing is that uh, the on the keyframers, y'all recently did an episode where you built this. Hey, I just created a professional Wix site for my business. Let's check it out. None of that. Getting that, no. getting that monetization. <laughs> Don't skip that ad, no. Um, okay, so um, so you had built something where, let's see if we can find it. Uh, yeah, if you, yeah. Like here, this you took this animation, and then by the end of the show, 
you would like coded that up entirely, right? So yep. that it was it was doing. See if we can find where you're clicking on it and showing it work. Yeah, there's there's an actual uh, link to the code down below if you want to oh, nice. live live demo it. Uh, yeah, that that was a that was a fun one. We used uh, some CSS variables and pseudo elements, um, and uh, and CSS animations to kind of create that fun little little action. Totally. Um, and so we had talked about like that, or um, because this is we both are Twitch streamers, uh, it could be kind of fun to play with um, like animated overlays. So something like a notification when somebody raids or a uh, subscriber like count or, or something like that, or just something random um, where we can kind of just say like, hey, if somebody uses a certain command, we can trigger kind of like the Corgi stampede. Um, so we can play with with any of those things. So chat, if you have ideas or Steven, if you have ideas, we can we can kind of take some direction. And then I have set up a collaborative code pen that we're just going to um, we're going to truck along through this thing. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, we're able to code along together. This is a uh, code pen collab mode uh, that we use for keyframers and um, it's a it's a really great way to just work together on something really quick without having to set up like a full a full environment. Mm -hmm. um, so we can we can take advantage of preprocessors and uh, and all that here, and then um, you know leave that work to you in the end to integrate that into the actual uh, uh, right. triggers. Yeah. So so what we're gonna do today uh, to to scope it down, like we're not gonna actually put this into the stream. Like I, I that feels a little too much like like laying the tracks while we're flying across them. So <laughs> I'm also yeah. not 100% confident in my ability to update anything while the stream is running without taking down the whole stream. Uh, um, yes. So we'll we'll build fun things and keep them in code pen and then I'll uh, I'll get them integrated into into Twitch a little bit later on. Yeah. Um so I think I think it would be fun um I would love to do something like if we uh, did like a, a subscriber thing or like a raid thing, because right now the subscription is like fun, but it's like, I don't know. It feels like it should be a bigger deal, you know, where when somebody joins, we should like play a song or like you, you like if you have you ever watched Insta Fluff? Um, Insta Fluff. I, I've, I've heard the name. So when when Insta Fluff has a subscriber, like he has a um, a song that plays and like, a bunch of a bunch of his emotes start like showing up all over the screen and like he you know like people can do a, a command in the chat to like flood certain emotes in there and it's just this very like interactive experience it's really fun um and so i think it would be really it would be kind of fun to play with that right so yeah. thinking about what we can do um let's see like we could we could just take the corgi and like do something fun with the corgi. We could have it rain corgis. Um, we could also play with the boop thing. Um, I have a, a boop emote that I, I'll just put one in the chat. Oh yeah, love that boop. Um, and th these are all vector, so I don't know exactly what we'd be up against for, for doing, I, I, this may, that may be out of scope for this stream to do vector animation stuff but um no not not uh not necessarily um yeah if you've got if you've got the svg uh for it or can can get an svg for it we can i do indeed in. yeah let's um let's let's get in there so i'll jump into uh, i'm not gonna log. well maybe i'm logged in here i am all right so in here we have Emotes. Mm -hmm. We've got this one, and we can SVG that. Yeah, and then uh, just open that up in um, in Chrome or whatever. We don't have to use assets here, um, oh, okay. though that is a great Pro Code Pen feature. Um, we can actually just uh, yeah use that use that code directly. So if you uh, view source here or, or uh, yeah inspect the inspect the DOM. You can actually just copy that SVG and drop it into um, into the into the editor. 
Okay, so we'll go in here and I'll just drop it below for now. Yeah. And are are you familiar with uh, SVG OMG? I am. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so we can actually run that through there and um, and that'll clean up the SVG code a lot. If you're not familiar, uh, SVG O is a SVG optimizer um, that runs on the on the command line. And then there's a web version called SVG OMG by Jake Archibald uh, that's super helpful. Um, so if you're ever working with SVGs or vectors, run it through SVG OMG first. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, you can see down there in the bottom, it, it's already saving um, almost half the file size there. And there's additional options um, in there. Uh, let's see. And some of these will like break your thing. So like if you turn on some of them, I just find I, I like turn on as many as I can until <laughs> it starts to look bad. <laughs> yeah. And, and certain ones you don't necessarily want to uh, do if, if, you know, like we're planning to animate. So if you like merge the paths that that might actually, you know, cause cause a problem. But uh, yeah, let's. Uh, merge paths should be fine for this. I think I think they're all merged anyway, like the B O O and P. Um, so yeah, that should be good. I don't think anything else will actually save. Okay, so then we can copy this, mm -hmm. come back over here, and we'll just replace it mm -hmm. all the way back up. Yeah, that's that's the reason you want to optimize so it at least uh, cleans up a little bit. And now it's fully responsive because it removed the the width and height of it. Right. Uh, but we can we can reset that if we need to. Uh, that's very yeah. cool. Yeah, that's that's a handy little little trick for that. Um, so let's see. So we can let's go ahead and specify a width just so it's not taking up the full full screen there. Okay. Um, it's cool. All right. So with with SVG, um, animation can be a little bit tricky, uh, depending on exactly what you want to do. Uh, if you're wanting to only do it with with CSS, um, this is typically where um, where uh, JavaScript libraries, especially GSAP, can come in handy mm. um, to to help make that a little a uh, little easier to animate uh, because cross browser. SVG animation is is tough. Uh, there's there's a lot of differences with like the way the transform works or or certain properties, uh, especially like where it transforms from. Some browsers it'll transform from like the origin of the SVG. Some of them it's like the origin of the item. It's it's uh, it's a mess. Uh, okay. So <laughs> there are some things that we can do uh, rather rather easily with um, with this. So let me. Try and understand what the breakdown is here. Uh, one feature we just launched uh, with um, with CodePen is uh, formatting on save. Uh, it's it's disabled in collab mode for a lot of reasons, uh, right. but you can trigger that with the uh, keyboard shortcut Command Shift F, uh, and that will Command clean up all the, all the code really nicely. Makes nice. it much more readable, um, and. It's using Prettier and JS Beautify and a few other things under the hood. Um, that's fun. All right, so we've got the mask, which I think is um, is what's doing the uh, the outline with like the gradient mm. there. Is that right? Yep. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. So that's the outline gradient. This path right here is. The like stroke around the boop, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then what is this? Oh, that's like the the actual letter form, like the yeah. the white shape. Yeah. So there's there's there seems like some duplicate stuff. So this is one thing like you can do manual cleanup with Ooh. some of this. Oh, that's interesting. I'm trying to figure out what what all these elements are here. Should we start giving them like IDs or something so we can remember? Uh, ideally, yes. Um, I can do that. Okay, 
this is the first F one. Clip F, clip ID. Yeah, and it gets it gets tricky because we're let's see. So there's like the defs linear gradient. Oh, okay, that's what the defs are down here at the bottom. Um, and definitions in SVG are just like a, a reusable component, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. You can define um, gradients or, or actual paths and elements uh, to reuse uh, throughout your, your uh, SVG. Um, so let's see here. OK, we've got gradient BG, got mask ID equal A. Yeah, so that seems to be the outline um, in that. But where is that Where's that stroke actually coming from? I think it's this one here. Because if I, if I get rid of that, it goes away. Right, but it, it only has a fill there, so I'm not sure. Sometimes just changing to red huh oh weird. weird okay so this is the this is the mask so f f f okay um yeah i don't even know what that that is um and then commenting out this so zero I wonder. Okay, so this is the actual um, yeah. text here. So I wonder if we even take this out, if that does anything. Yeah, it just kind of gives us that weird. So you know stroke. what I th you know what I think this is. I have a I have a theory. I think yeah. what this is is um, it's like putting it's taking the um, the outline and then the shape on top of it, which are like two stack shapes. And then it's identifying a mask to clip out that um, the the inside of that stroke. Right. Okay. So that that is uh, that is something um, that's kind of a problem with SVG is uh, you can only have a stroke that's centered. Um, mm. So so strokes can't be uh, based on like the outside or the inside, like in Figma or or Illustrator or whatever. Okay. Um, they they are only center. Um, I think there's some spec work coming for that, but nobody's committed to it yet, so sure can't really rely on that. So when exporting to SVG, Figma, and these other programs, we'll use clipping masks and other weird things. Uh, but one thing we can do is what I just did, uh, which is moving that stroke under the fill <laughs> layer there, essentially. Oh, um, nice. So I've, I've completely removed that mask. That simplifies things a little bit um, uh, and, and gives us fewer layers to work with. Um, so this right here, this is uh, fill. We can say ID equals uh, loop stroke. And then down below is uh, loop text. And I suspect these are actually using the same path for the most part. Um, so I wonder here, at, we're, we're getting into some fun SVG optimization uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I, so what I, I am do, currently very into that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, well, so what we can do is actually move this path into, um, into the defs down below. And then we can okay. go, go use xlink uh, href equals boop. And that should, yep, that gives us the, the text there. What? Um, and, and we can do that same thing for the stroke um, rather than having this extremely complex um, extra path for that. We can actually do uh, stroke equals that, let's remove that, uh, fill equals f, um, remove that, and then we'll say fill equals one. And then we can um, bump up the stroke width a bit to like three. Um, 
yeah. And boom, <laughs> we just optimized the SVG a little bit. That just kind of blew my mind. Not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, so yeah, defs and use are are extremely helpful um, for this this kind of thing. Um, you have to know what you're doing a little bit for like this specific thing, knowing about like the layering and the way that stroke works in SVG. Uh, for the most part, that's you know a really handy way to do that. Um, and now with uh, ID <laughs> equals stroke. Ryan Warner Coates calls this a booptimization, which I am <laughs> just. Beautifully done. Yes. Beautifully yes. done. I, I am a huge fan of, of, of puns, so please keep those coming throughout. Um, boop. Text. All right. And so one thing we can do uh, just right away in the in the CSS uh, or for, for like animation. Um, so let's say uh, for our boop stroke, if we want to uh, animate that that stroke like um you know the the typical kind of like drawing svg animation mm -hmm. um we can actually specify on the path um path length equals one um and then that allows us to do a uh, stroke dash array okay i'm gonna i'm gonna stop you because i don't know what any of that means what what is the the path length uh okay so path length is is a is kind of a newer SVG attribute, and what this does is it tells the browser uh, whatever whatever the actual length of the path. Uh, every path in SVG has a length, which is basically just how many units long the the path is. So, like from the start point all the way around to the end point is going to be some kind of value. Typically, okay. Typically, you'll get that in the JavaScript. Um, so document a query selector, selector ID, oops, stroke. Uh, and then we can do uh, stroke dot get total length, I think is the property. Um, I'll have to double check that. Uh, if you hit uh, command option four, um, It'll open up the uh, console in uh, in CodePen, so you can see the out uh, the output of that console, uh, or, you, or click the console on the bottom. Yeah, we go. Okay, stroke get length. What is that? Um, uh, get length. Yeah. Okay, so that's that should be. Well, let's just make sure the stroke is an actual element that it's receiving. Okay, yes. Uh, but we actually need to target boop because uh, the use element doesn't have the, the same kind of um, properties available on it. All right, so you see that random number there? I do. In the, in the console. So that is the length of the stroke. Um, so this... Uh, is a value that we can use for these kind of stroke animations. Um, but what I'm going to do is apply that path length to the uh, ID of boop. And uh, this allows us to actually do um, the, the kind of stroke drawing animation in a really easy way without any JavaScript. So we can actually comment this out. We don't need that anymore. And uh, so in the CSS, I've got boop stroke with stroke dash array one one and stroke dash offset zero. Uh, and what we can do is do animation draw boop two seconds linear uh, infinite alternate. Um, and this is the animation uh, property in in CSS, uh, the shorthand version. This essentially is animation name, animation duration. Animation ease, uh, animation timing function, which is the easing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, animation, what is it? Animation repeat. Uh, animation. I think yeah, I think iteration like count. Yeah. Uh, animation iteration count, so infinite. So we want it to repeat forever, and then animation uh, direction. Yes, animation direction alternate. So it's basically going to go back and forth. Um, so what we can do here is now uh, declare our keyframes. Actually, would you mind uh, switching us over to SCSS? Um, 
So click the little settings there and then yeah, toggle over to SCSS. Great. Uh, so now I can nest this. I, I just like grouping the keyframes with where they're used. I gotcha. It's not a not a big deal, but uh, so we can say from stroke dash offset one and then what? Boom. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, this is essentially um, what's what's happening here. Uh, so stroke dash array tells the browser that I want uh, that I want the the stroke to actually be rendered dashed. Um, so if I change this to like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, um, you'll see some some dashing happening there. Oh, I got it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird right now because we have the path length equals one. So we've got to go real small with the units uh, to, to really get like a true dashed line look. Uh, because the benefit of that path length e equals one is we don't have to do our calculations based on, on that like 673, you know, number. Um, oh, we can okay. Just, we can just tell it uh, that we want uh, the filled in dash, which is this first value, to be one. Um, so that that draws a stroke the entire width of the thing. And then the second value here is the the gap of the dash. So if we tell that to be one, then now we have a full dash uh, and then a, a completely empty dash. Okay. Uh, and then by animating that, we can do that kind of drawing effect. So it draws mm -hmm. it in and then uh, it draws it back out. Nice. That is, uh, that is very cool. And so if we were to switch this to be something that was like an in, right? So we could set it to one and forwards. Actually, we can just leave this out, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just comes in once. Yep. And that's it. So that, that could be a way that we like bring it into the, the, the frame. And we could also play with something like, um, let's see, uh, we could do like a transform Sorry, scale for just a moment yeah uh keep keep going there we go <laughs> uh so oh, this yeah, is gonna this be is... weird because i'm i'm not in the right place right so th this is one of those limitations <laughs> of <laughs> of the svg yes, animation there we go uh so even if we if we like specify transform origin center center mm -hmm. um yeah, I don't even think that's going to work in. Oh, okay. that works. So okay. yeah, it does. It does kind of work in Chrome, uh, but cross browser, that's going to be a problem. Okay. Um, so one one option here is when you want to animate like the layers of the SVG, is you actually split them up into separate SVG elements. Um, so we can we can do that, or we okay. can animate the entire um, the entire boop container itself as as uh, just one. That was what I was. That was kind of what I was thinking here. Is so we could do keyframes, um, and we would do like boob zoom, and then we could do a from, and I can actually just take this that I think is still in my. Yeah. All right. Cool. So that I believe should all be. Let's see. Yeah, I set an idea boop. There, animation boop zoom, transform, scale one. It should be working. Um, yeah, and you you typically won't have to specify transform none. Um, let me just make sure. Yeah, because we've got our ID boop there. If we change Indeed. that out for just SVG, let's see if that suddenly changes it. Nope. That is strange. Um, oh. Yeah, there we go. All right. OK. Nice. OK. Oh, wait. And then we can do something really silly. Like we can do um, <laughs> the bat signal. We can bat signal. You going to do it? Uh, OK, did I? Or wait, is it? Ah, it's not. Uh, it's not. Will it do it'll do multiples, right? 
Oh, it sure will. Uh, yes, and and one way you can actually uh, <laughs> simplify this, <laughs> so you don't oh, have to worry about so degrees silly. or radians or anything like that. You can actually say two terms. What? Oh, you just blew my mind. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty rad, huh? That is kind of fun. Um, do you want to teach us the the cubic Bezier? function for for linear easing sure uh let me try one thing really quick um before we get into that okay uh, yeah uh-huh uh-huh you see what's happening here Ooh. Ooh, it gets okay. Little, all right. We we so started strong, got weird. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> where like where are you right now? Work, I've yes. lost you. Uh, so uh, down on line thirteen in the HTML, um, all I did was swap out the stroke um, for the the uh, def down below of the of the uh, linear gradient. Oh, I got you. Um, okay. So strokes can actually you know be gradient or or uh, you know just standard color or an image. Like there's there's a lot of uh, different properties you can use there. Um, so by doing that, we actually get that uh, same stroke drawing animation um, uh, with with the gradient. Um, and we could actually so duplicate that and then do down here, let's see. Actually, let me switch that back. And then we can duplicate with um, the rainbow. And then Makes me feel like we want uh, we need like a theme song for that. It's a boopin' rainbow. Boopin rainbow. <laughs> uh, and and we can actually uh, do an animation delay here of of two seconds uh, or probably one second. Um, both. Uh, yeah. So what is our okay? We're we're zooming in over one second. Um, so maybe just making it a little bit longer of a duration instead. Yeah. All right. So yeah, let's Holy let's go buckets. back into did that just work? <laughs> Does it uh what if we like change can you change the direction on these so that they like draw at different speeds or like make the dash yeah. offset longer or something? Yeah, uh, so we can actually uh, swap uh, and kind of change the, the direction here. So uh, one thing we can do is leave um, leave the animation as basically two stroke dash offset zero. And then if we say stroke dash uh, crash dash offset one here, um, that's going to be the same kind of animation. But we can then override that down here. So okay. loop rainbow, um, and then say stroke dash offset negative one. And in theory, those will draw in opposite directions. How cool! I'll take off that animation. Um, so there, there are some oddities with with paths, like specifically. Uh, when when there's like uh, cutout portions or like you, you know just the the actual winding of the path um, that can kind of produce some some oddities there, uh, but but yeah overall that's a that's a relatively cheap and uh, and easy to implement effect um, especially for like a loader or you know just like a, a nice little intro animation um, that yeah. you can do with just a few lines of code. Um, yeah, and, and infinite and alternate, that's going to kind of bounce it in and out. Um, and, and one thing you can do to kind of give it a little bit of a resting state, if instead of two, we do like 80%, 100%, that's going to give us oh, kind of a pause. Oh, I got it. Yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's a that's a nice nice approach to take. And then uh, let's let's talk uh, cubic Bezier a little bit. Um, so down here we can say animation timing function. You can also do it within here. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm just overriding the linear, um, and and it's nicer to have it broken out so you can uh, read it a little a little easier. 
so cubic bezier is a function in CSS that allows you to specify a custom easing. Um, so you can do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 1, uh, and I'll break that down a little bit in a second. But that that is a is a great easing just to drop in when you're not sure like what what easing to do. That has a very natural uh, movement. If you go to cubic-bezier.com, Bezier, um, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it really, but uh, this is a fantastic little tool uh, made by Lee Veru, um that gives you like just handles you can drag around so that you can really play with, with an easing and see how those properties work. Um, so the first two properties there are the pink handle. Um, so yeah, like on your screen, the 0 0.50 um, and then 0.51. Yeah, right. Um, so that's just kind of like a uh, ease in out uh, animation. Um, if you select down below uh, under library where it says ease in out, um, that should be roughly roughly equivalent um, with mm -hmm. maybe a little smoother motion on the on the pink one. If you click go again um, with those, yeah, click go to just see the right. Got it. So they're they're roughly equivalent, but the the point five is a little is a little nicer. One thing we we probably want to do is adjust it uh, so that it's a little slower on the on the out tick. Um, so basically, that uh, right, keep moving that handle over to the left, and that's going to slow down at the end. Now, if you click go and watch, so it's a little faster up front. But these are these animations are the same the same duration. Got so, it. Uh, so it seems a little like it's moving a little bit faster, but it's actually slowing down more like a physical animation. Okay. Um, which is cool. So, so if I if copy we, this. Yeah, just copy that and drop it in there, and should see. So it's it's very fast up front, uh, but it it slows mm -hmm. down into an easing, but we can actually um, improve that a little bit. Um, so I'm going to edit this first value. Uh, oh, not point. Uh, so we want that to be like 0. 0.8. Okay. And that that slows it down up front as well as uh, as at the end. Uh, so we can do like 7.3. So the start of it is slow, and then the, the end of it is um, is nice. uh, slow, but in the middle, it kind of speeds up there. And I just swapped our animation so that the um, boop stroke is the one coming in from the opposite way. I think that looks a little bit stronger. Oh, nice. Yeah. Let's see if we can make that rainbow a little bit thicker. Great. And then um, let's see. What so, now the um... There's a, there's a thing that I've seen. So if I make this, so let's go like, let's go even thicker here. And I think this is going to start to look weird, right? So a thing is happening now where we're getting these like spiky edges and this, this is now kind of unfilling itself for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, and I think the reason that happens is because of the fill mode. And yes, I'm going to, I'm going to say things based on my like observed understanding of them and then you can you can correct me but yeah. the the way that i've understood this is that um the way that vectors work is they kind of look at enclosed areas and then so if you've got a circle and then a circle and then a circle the way if those are all part of the same path the way that it would it would work is the the outermost circle would be filled and then the next one would switch to being not filled and then it would encounter another path and it would fill that one so what we're doing right now is we're creating like these confusing overlaps with the stroke because it's right. kind of exceeding its area and that's causing these like alternating fill modes. So right. is there a way to just make that go away? Possibly. Uh, so down on line 17 in the HTML um, for our, our kind of boot path, um, uh -huh. there's a clip, a clip rule of even odd. If we take that out, it's possible that that will completely break it. Uh, it's possible that will fix it. It did nothing. Uh, uh, so depending on how the path is set up, um, mm -hmm. that will, um, is there a clip rule that's just like whatever the equivalent of union is, where it just kind of like everything adds all the time? Uh, so there's non zero, 
uh, which yeah, I don't I don't think that's going to do anything either. Um, let me see. So the I think first thing to come in is that uh, let's see. I'm looking at the actual path data to see if I can kind of see where um, where it's being set up. Okay, so here's an N, here's an N. I wonder if I take this out. Okay, that's the big O circle that I just found. Um, I feel a little bit right now like I'm watching somebody who can just see the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is kind of like that. Uh, so one, one thing I'm doing, if you're looking at the path, path data or like where my cursor is, so this M, um, that that is the uh, SVG path equivalent of picking up your pin and moving to a new spot. So uh, all of these other all of these other commands uh -huh. right here are are like just dragging your pin across the page, like we're doing with this with the stroke animation. Uh, but whenever you encounter this uppercase M, it's like picking up the pin and starting in a new spot. Got it. So okay. Th these are basically all the individual shapes that make up the um, the boop. Um, and it, so, is the does the z is that like the end of that stroke is the, that uh, right the z the z basically says okay we're done with that got it okay um, so if i take this one out this one's probably the okay that's the b there I take this one out that one's the okay this one's the tiny o so if we move this it's possible so I, I think the problem is it's the the O is being drawn, but the stroke is so big that it's like doubling the O. And that's why we're getting the even odd fill. At least that, yeah. that's because you can kind of see it draw and then undraw itself. Right. Uh, yeah. And part of it, part of it's like the way that it's layered in, in there as well. That's what I was trying mm. to get, get around is um, seeing if, if moving that layering would help. It does not appear that's the case. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to hack the raw data here. See if uh, <laughs> anything comes up. Um, more than likely, it's just gonna break things. Okay, that did part of it. Because yeah, I do think you're right about the the way that it's um, kind of duplicated. Okay, that's too much there. Um, so we can. Back it up a little bit. Let's see if that. Also, I feel like I missed closer. a moment here where you you took it from being very chunky to having the like rounded edges. Oh yeah, uh, sorry. That was a that was just a quick a quick change um, down or sorry up on line um, ten stroke line join. I changed oh, that. Oh nice. Okay. Um, and we can actually do this on the other stroke as well. Uh, and that that basically just gives the the corners a little bit of a, a rounded uh, edge. Yeah, and if um, I zoom in here, I can see that the like these lines now are all rounded instead of being hard, which is which is nice. Right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know that I'm gonna make any progress by hacking the the. Uh, the circle manually. Uh, so what we can do is just bump that uh, stroke down a little bit more, and that that helps. Um, How far can we go? What if we do fifteen? Then what happens? Fifteen. Oh, you're pushing it closer. You're Let's go sixteen. It. Oh, that's so weird. Did you see that? Yeah. Right, because it's it's it is that like overlapping idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, f fourteen sh sure should be should be good. Um, Twelve almost. What, what we can what we can do uh, also is like separate the paths and and uh, and you know clean things up in that way. Like sure. having a having a boot path that doesn't have any of these cutout elements. So like for instance, um, all of those M things I was pointing pointing to you, uh -huh. those are the cutouts. So if I remove all of that, it should just be one solid shape, for the most part. Oh, cool. Do that. Yeah, and then we could uh, fill it instead of stroking it with that right. gradient. Right, so let, let me just try that really quick. So I'll do a uh, boop fill path. Um, and 
there may be some other hacking that needs to happen with it. Um, oh, and there is a fill rule here. Hold on, let me try that. Uh, oh, got to close the path element. Hey, that's that's something. I mean, closer. Uh, yeah, it did. It did remove those those two. I think that's that has to do with the direction. Uh, clip rule. So let's let's take out the clip rule here. Let's see. If that does anything? No. Uh, okay. Well, we can we can do that at least um, for the. Uh, for the fill path here. And we can change the boop rainbow out to use X length ref on line 10, boop fill path. What did I break? Hold on. Broke something. Oh, I keep uncommenting uh, or unclosing that. There we go. It's a little bit better. And we can probably bump that uh, strip path up now and get a better outline. Um, I think we need to make sure. Okay, we've got fill, non fill. I wonder. Um... This might be like very micro optimizing, but like if we if we created the fill shapes for like the the inside of the letters as separate elements, right? Yeah, there there's there's just like some some oddities there. Let me see if I can um, trim out just a little bit more. Uh, so another another thing to look for in the um, in the paths is uh, uh, let's see M. Uh, so looking for lowercase M helps us know uh, where it's a it's a relative move. So the the M just indicates moving. Um, lowercase M is a relative move. So I think I stripped out the the P. Yeah, so I stripped out the the P shape. Okay. Um, and so I'm wondering if let me see, let me comment out the actual white outline and let's see what we got. Okay. Uh, oh, so our stroke just isn't isn't full enough. That's the problem. Very yeah, that's, very close. That's what, yeah. <laughs> Kind of. Uh, so we can actually, yeah. Okay, I, I know. I know what to do here. All right. So we are going to. There, there's some discussion about Lottie in the chat. Um, that's a that's a really cool um, program to use. Um, that uh, that helps a lot uh, with with just animation in general because uh, it gives you you know the typical like uh what is it adobe uh what's their animation program uh, uh adobe after effects or oh adobe yeah after yeah effects but uh their their animation programs you can basically export from that and have like a vector animation on the web um or or in like native apps and and all that okay really cool it helps a lot yes thank you Vinny code uh <laughs> So uh, one one thing I'm going to do is fill um, and do instead of fill none, we're going to fill it with that rainbow as well. Okay. And let's let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah. See that. Uh, but if we do that within the animation, so let's say at keyframes, um, fill boop. And then we'll say uh, at 80% and 100%, we'll have it like that with the fill. So it's going to go from fill none, basically fill transparent, 
um, to filled in with the rainbow stuff. And then we'll say animation name. We'll do uh, draw boop and fill boop. And what that's going to do is just give us these two animations stacked on top of each other. Oh, nice. Yeah, that looks really good. And that. Uh, and it all happens so fast that it kind of doesn't look. There doesn't seem to be any jank there, which is kind of nice. Yeah, and and if we say fill transparent, that should fade it a little bit. Actually, I think, I think because we're doing a uh, a gradient, um, that's actually going to uh, cause it to um, that. That's actually causing it to just like snap over to that fill property. Mm -hmm. So, uh, boop rainbow fill. Uh, and what we'll do here is go ahead and just fill it in the SVG with that. Take off the stroke properties here. And we'll say boop rainbow fill animation fade in. And then we'll just go from uh, opacity zero. And then it will fade in to opacity one. Uh, but we do need to kind of copy these properties here. And that should fill it, slowly fill in the rainbow. Um, so maybe we, that. instead of being 80, we can make that like 79 or something? Uh, well, we, uh, so we probably want it to be more like 0, 60%. Um, so you kind of have to specify a range, like if you want it to stay Oh, I, I get what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Time. Um, so we can do like that, and then we can actually have it fade in a little bit sooner. Like that. And, you know, if we speed up the animation, then uh, then that that can help a bit too um, with, with that in general. Okay, so let's maybe go a little bit quicker, see what happens. Yeah. And then combine that with our battering. I think this needs to go just a little bit faster because it's. Yeah. <laughs> and part of that is is the is the easing too. If we if we play with that, then that'll we'll help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm going to take off the stroke line cap. That'll help a little bit with making it completely invisible. OK, so with this, I want to make a really ridiculous cubic bezier, uh, because what we want is a little snapback at the end, right? So yes. we will go from. Try, try typing it natively. Let's, let's see if see. you can do it. So it's x, y and x y so i'm going to start with we want to be about halfway out and i want to go just a little bit below and then we want to finish uh probably like 0 0.2 so like pretty aggressive slowdown but we'll take it kind of far let's see how that feels uh, so a couple of things. Uh, so for this, we, we don't really want a negative value because we want it to snap in, uh, or we want it to, we want it to, uh, start fast and then, and then kind of retract a little bit. So this should okay. actually stay zero. We don't want that to go negative. Um, and then, uh, oh, this, even, we even probably more, want... more, there we go. Now it's too much. Uh, maybe, maybe even like that. Yeah. How do we get it to like? So we can actually separate the two. Uh, so let's say um, animation. I fucked here. Animation name. So we'll do boop, zoom, and boop, rotate. And this will give us. Uh, we'll we'll do two. Oh no, we can't because they're um, both transforms. Get it. Uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that. Um, when I ask that. Uh, so that that is one of the limitation of cubic beziers. If you go back over to cubicbezier.com, you can kind of see 
how that's um, how that's happening. So if you like drag the handle up, like right, you, like you want. Um, so you can play with that a little bit um, to to get that a little a little more accurate. Um, it looks like doing uh, here. Let me let me copy one in and uh, and we can see how that works. Um, so having the having the handle, um, yeah, kind of up in that in that quadrant seems to seems to help a lot with the with the kind of slowdown of it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what we want. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want even more controls, but I'm not sure how to do it. Right. Well, that that's the limitation of of Cubic Bezier. You really can't um, have any more control than than just those two. Um, there's there's some spec work being done for additional um, additional controls. <laughs> um, uh, you got you got kind of a little little snap back there. That's that is way too much, but it kind of that looks a little bit more like what I was trying for. Although yeah. I did I broke it to the point that I can't get my handle anymore. Um, <laughs> Whoops. Well. Uh, yeah, actually, that might work here. Uh, I've copied one over into the into the code pen that I think okay. will do it. Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, it, it's just it's so so fast and aggressive that um, you kind of need to bump up the duration so that it's a little more visible there. Um, yeah, it, it's it's really. It's really just kind of a game of of playing with it to um, get it as as close to what you're wanting as possible. And let's um, look at this for a second and see how it feels. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, I think. Let me try one more real quick. And again, we can kind of add a delay with the, or like a repeat delay by just keeping that last duration. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we could take off alternate on the other animations and uh, Pretty cool. I am I am very fond of all of this ridiculousness. Uh, you wanna you want another, another <laughs> fun Too trick? Much. If we do uh, so, boop is our SVG here. And uh -huh. if we do position absolute top zero, left zero, right zero, bottom zero, margin auto. Okay. Vertical centering. Oh, look at that. Like nothing. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really fun trick for anything that has set dimensions. Uh, so like an image, uh, canvas, SVG, um, or uh, uh, or even just like an element that you say like width 80%, height 80%. Um, Position absolute plus margin auto to mm -hmm. get that centered. Nice. So there, there are a couple things that um, so chat noticed. Like for whatever reason, this gradient stopped closing all the way. Yeah, that is possibly for a couple of reasons here. Let's tone down the scale of it. Okay. okay we can maybe offset. Chill on that for just a hot second. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's just a rounding error. Let's say point zero zero one. Oh, it gets so closer. Yeah. All right, all right there it is. Yeah. Uh, and so the other thing is, it looks like our viewport is slightly off uh, because our stroke is getting clipped at the the left edge. Right, and that's easy enough to modify. Um, so, have you worked with Viewbox before? Only in the sense that I am aware 
I am aware that what we're doing is drawing a rectangle. Yes. But I'm not a hundred percent sure how like I've seen I've seen it where you're kind of positioning your artwork on a canvas and so you want to um depending on on what you're doing, like position it where dead center on the image is actually zero zero in your your view box so that you can like spin things without having to do a bunch of nonsense. But that's really like as much as I've done with it. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's essentially like establishing a, a frame. Mm -hmm. So S, SVG, like you can have as much off canvas or you know center canvas or whatever as you want. Uh, but the view, back, view box is determining like what is shown in, in the picture frame. Gotcha. So uh, zero, zero just means that box is going to start at X zero, Y zero. And then uh, 112, 112 is saying how far uh, to the left uh, it's going to go out. Uh, so on the x coordinate is the is the first value. So mm -hmm. it's going 112 units over to the left, and then down 112 units uh, for the for the y uh, coordinate. So this is essentially width and height, mm -hmm. and this is x and y. Got it. So if we want a, a slightly bigger canvas, um, so real quick, let's add a border solid two pixels red. Debugging, that's pretty much always what you want. Uh, yep. uh, so with our view box, we'll say negative 10, negative 10, and then we'll bump this up. Um, I think we actually have to- We'd want to double that, right? 132? Right. Um, and that will give us uh, an extra, 10 on each side an extra Excellent. 10 units yeah and these aren't pixels they're svg units just fyi <laughs> right yeah uh so yeah that that gives us um that gives us a little bit of extra room that we can play with and now yep there we go so now we have our rotating in Oh wait, why is it? Yeah, it kind of so that that kind of looks like a rounding error, uh, like uh, like it's having trouble with that with that corner, because our uh, so let's bring back the border because we're not we're not overflowing, actually what it could be. Um, so down in our depths, let's look at the linear gradient. Okay. That's possibly what it is. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not as familiar with like the linear gradient setup, but like the way that that these x and y coordinates are, it might be like stopping the gradient at a certain spot. Oh. There's, also, there's also this clip path that I'm not really sure what it's doing. Okay, yeah, the clip path was actually contributing to some of that. So, so we could potentially just get path, rid of the clip path. Yeah, I don't even think we need that anymore because we changed the way we're um, we're doing everything. Yeah. So we can take that out and presto. Nice. Nice. All right. So SVG animation huh. with just CSS. That yeah, that was really cool. Um, so. <laughs> So I feel like this took a, a violent turn from where we originally started. Yeah, uh, no, <laughs> uh, I dig it. Um, yeah, that's that's super cool. Uh, we can we can do a text animation too, real quick, if you if you want. That was what I was just going to suggest. Is um, let's let's maybe play with um, you. You put this party core you just subscribed up here. Yeah. What if we What if we play with something co so that I am able to in the the overlays insert dynamic text so like who subscribed yeah. or, or things like that and then we can animate that around a little bit yep uh so uh what we'll use for this um so i'm going to uh kill the infinite repeat of our probably wise so that we don't get driven mad here um infinite. Let's see, okay. no. yeah great all right so boop will just animate in now um, good so what we'll use for this is actually uh, what you and Mandy uh, talked about in, in, I guess it was the last episode, um, uh, splitting JS. Um, yes. This is a, this is a library uh, that, I, that I wrote um, and uh, had some help from a guy, Notorious B1T, uh, his name is Chris. Um, he's, he's a great help um, in putting that together. 
so this is a this is a JavaScript microlibrary that helps with uh, splitting text uh, and other things, but primarily designed for text. Um, so what we'll do is include that. Um, I, I'm just gonna um, use unpackage.com slash splitting. Um, and I'll drop that in the, um, in the external includes. Uh, so splitting.js.org um, is, is what to check out for that if you're interested. Um, there's uh, some supporting uh, CSS. Splitting dot JS JS org. Dot org. Yeah. Okay, pass that over. And uh, yeah, there's so there's CSS and there's JavaScript. Um, the CSS isn't isn't strictly necessary, but it does help a lot. There's some uh, helper uh, variables in that. Um, link that there um, that that help you do like some additional calculations. Um, got it. Okay. So I've got uh, data splitting defined here. Um, and, and, and at the 10,000 foot view, like that, so what, what you're doing is you're saying once you've included splitting in your page, if you add data splitting, the, the splitting library is going to go in and find each letter and make that an independently targetable, like animatable element. Right. Yes. And that's that's what it does. That's that's the library. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, and I actually need to consult my own documentation, make sure I'm doing it right. Uh, so there's a yeah, white space true that should be getting triggered by sometimes white space true. Don't know why that um, span party corgi word. Okay, I guess since there's nested spans, it um, it's not doing that quite right. Um, so let me just change this out for a div for fun. Let's. <laughs> it breaks. Oh, something something, bit, something just went right. super weird in my editor. Oh. Uh, that fix it. It looks, yeah, it looks normal again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was doing like the auto complete, uh, for the start and end tags. Um, gotcha. That, that can mess up. All right. So we've got, uh, we've got notification. All right. So how we can illustrate this, um, is not splitting, um, are and we'll say border solid Olympics red. Uh, splitting dot char. Where is it? Uh, oh, sorry. We just need splitting. Yeah. So you can see each of these is actually an individual element. Okay. Um, and they're just set to display inline block. So within our notification, we can say uh, div display inline block so that they're um, that they're broken up, uh, or so that it's all in line. And then okay. we can say um, margin zero zero point five m, something like that, um, to give us spacing in between the word yeah there we go um we can actually yeah that'll be fine uh and what what's a what's a font you like um we can probably go system font stack because i end up using a font that i um that i bought a license for okay let's do uh, your your uh brand is kind of monospace right some, some of it. Sure. <laughs> uh, well, like your party, your party corgi is uh, is pixelated, and uh, the the corgi um, animation. Yeah, that that is definitely eight bit. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll 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 start with that. Uh, Final eight bold. Let's just get that a little bit more visible. 
And then we probably want this like position absolute bottom zero. So it's not, you know, in the way. And then we'll do text align center. Get that all lined up. Probably bump that off the bottom a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we can actually say like font size, you know, three VW. Maybe four VW. Okay. That gives us a little bit of that that gives us some kind of dynamic text. It scales a little bit with right. the, um, with the viewport. All right. And so we'll say, let's take off our dot char and we'll do dot char here. We'll do animation um, y in. We'll do two seconds linear. I'm going to uh, comment out all the uh, SVG animations for now, just so we can focus on, on this. Okay. And then uh, animation fly in at keyframes, fly in. And we'll do from translate y, let's say 200%. And let's just see how that looks. Isn't that amazing? It's beautiful. Ship We're it. Done. All right. <laughs> You've been watching Learn with Jason. <laughs> and CSS animations, y'all. Uh, so, you know, there, there's nothing to write home about there. Uh, but, you know, that, that's, that's a start. So one of the benefits of splitting is we have all these individual char elements mm -hmm. that we can work with. Um, so what, what we can do with that is we actually get some uh, CSS variables added to it. Uh, you, you and Mandy uh, walked through this a little bit. Um, but the, the easiest and most awesome thing to do with that is to add an animation delay. Uh, this is going to basically be staggering. So we'll do uh, animation oh, delay. Oh, so we would need to add code. Indeed. Is that right? <laughs> uh, so we can do an animation delay var uh, times var char index. So the char index is... Uh, <laughs> Beautiful. Oh yeah, uh, look say, at it go. Say both, uh, and then we'll speed this up a little bit, um, more like one five, uh, even less than that. <laughs> a little bit more than that, uh, and that's that's just something fun to to play with um, to give you to give you some staggering. We can also mm -hmm. say like opacity zero. And we can also say like scale zero. And we can do that that same kind of uh, fun cubic bezier thing. Like if we grab the one just straight from our boop. Exactly. And drop it in, it'll start to get even a little funnier. Yes. Oh, actually, that doesn't even look funny. That just looks really nice. No. That that's exactly what I was what I was going for. We want we want that kind of bounce, on yeah, it because of, because of the way it's animating in, and we can actually um, switch the scale and the translate here, and that should um, oh nice, give a really nice uh, kind of effect. Uh, we can also say like, can, can you talk a little bit about why that just happened? Uh, so with uh, CSS transforms, the order of the properties is actually very important. Um, so the uh, if you do uh, scale before a transform, uh, it's going to scale the element before it's actually moving it around. Okay. Um, so this this translate y two hundred percent instead of being based on uh, on like the full size of the element, it's based on the scale uh, of the element. Kind. I gotcha. Of. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of a, a, a poor way to describe it, but that's essentially what's happening. And, and the same thing happens with uh, with like rotate. Mm -hmm. um, so if we do uh, rotate uh, one turn, translate Y 200%. You <laughs> see, see how that's whipping around? Yeah. Uh, because we're translating after it's rotated. Um, Got so it. Okay. It's translating out and then, and then rotating. So 
that's actually something fun uh, we can we can try to play with. If we uh, if we change this out for a calc and use some of our CSS variables like uh, bar, so th this is uh, part of that uh, that CSS I was including um, is the bar char percent. Um, this basically gives us a value from zero to one of okay. what the what the character is. So times one turn. Oh, so it gets like more intense as it goes. Right, but there, there's other, there's other variables. Uh, so distance percent is one. Um, this is going to basically be distance from the center. So you see how the center was oh. was pretty, uh, pretty slow, um, or, or doesn't doesn't have as dramatic of an effect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that. That's, that's like if you want your to do the worm. <laughs> Essentially, yes. Um, yeah, that's that's closer to what we want. I'm... Oh, that's kind of that's pretty fun though. Um, and what if we just add the scale right in front of that? Just do all of them. Oh, I got tripped over to insert mode. Translate uh, scale zero. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, it, we probably don't even need this uh, this calc for for that. Um, I was trying for a different effect, but I'd have to play with it a little bit more um, to get that. And then uh, you know we can we can bump up these values some to get even more of a bounce. Mm hmm. And uh, yeah, this is also another area where we can use this distance percent value. So let's say translate x. Our distance percent times negative uh, times, yeah, hundred percent, uh, and add an extra parentheses there. Oh, so they like they they flip up or down a little more. Nice. Uh, yeah. So it's it's basically moving them based on the distance percent. So uh, it's it's kind of like they're they're coming in. Um, from the middle, I think is, oh no, we want a uh, distance sign. This is what we want. Ooh. And times negative 100%. Oh yeah. yeah. See, see how they're kind of coming from the center now? Yeah. Uh, so this, this distance sign is a variable, uh, basically calculating the distance from the center but it's going from a uh, negative one to one. So zero is the very center. And Got then one it. is the far left and, and one is the far right. Um, so this, this is pure CSS kind of stuff. The only thing that splitting is adding is the spans and the character index for the, for the most part. So it's, uh, it's effectively giving us like some math that makes the CSS animations easier to do. Well, not even like the the actual JavaScript portion of splitting is is only giving us the index and the total. That that's that's all that it's giving the CSS. And so then, uh, oh, so you when get, when you're doing the distance sign, then you're calculating that with CSS variables. Right. Uh, so I'll I'll copy oh. that in, uh, here so you can you can see what that what that actual calculation is. Uh, so char offset is. Another uh, oh, CSS variable. Oh, that's wild! Yeah, uh, so you can you can do these additional calculations uh, within the CSS variables um, that help you determine that. So, like the center is going to be the total mm -hmm. divided by two. The minus one is it's zero index. So, um, right now, uh, the question in the chat: Where are those distance variables coming from? There's there's some CSS that's added as an external. Uh, resource in the in the pin if you click the settings. Um, this is just some extra helper CSS for splitting um, that you can include. It gives you these extra variables here. Oh hey, we got a raid. Let's see, this is the oh what's up, Brian Robinson? Thank you for the raid. Um, uh, cool. So yeah. Okay, so these are like the the declarations of the variables, right. and then we've got the offset and. The Distance. Okay. Distance sign. Cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. 
so yeah, those are just some helpers that give you these more like advanced kind of things that you can do. Um, so uh, let me. Uh, let me get some color for this for this text in here. Um, Did you just pull that color like you just knew that one? <laughs> yeah, just right off the top of my head. <laughs> you know, I, I'm using uh, I'm using a uh, a uh, small little app that that yeah. helps. Uh, capture uh, from the screen, uh, capture colors from the screen. See, this is where, so I started doing something kind of like this. And what ended up happening in my case was I, I fell back to doing SVG text mm. because I could do more like things that felt more familiar, like Figma, -y, sketchy Adobe Illustrator. -y. Um, and then when I saw what uh, what Mandy was doing, and when she walked me through all that, I was like, "Oh, there's this whole like this whole new like frontier of things that we can do here." Um, exactly. So it was it was super exciting. I uh, I I had a chance to do one like I, uh, another boop uh, kind of text treatment. Now I want to like play with that as a a way to put that on the site. I've actually got um, he's in the chat right now. Ryan Warner codes is going to come on the show soon and we're going to um, play with a redesign of learnwithjason.dev kind of using some of this new these new design elements that that have been generated as the show's gone on nice yeah um this is fun this looks like i need 3d glasses for it <laughs> uh, it wouldn't hurt i'm sure <laughs> uh, i was trying to find i i have uh some uh quick javascript that yeah, here it is. Okay, that's a play. Um, so this, whenever we click, it will re-trigger the, the animations. Um, so you don't have to um, kind of change the code each time. You can nice. just How it. did you do that? Uh, in the JavaScript um, panel. Um, so I've created a style element uh, with just animation none um, set to override everything. Uh, then whenever you click, it adds that to the head, and then the next frame it removes that. So that I can it, it, this is where it starts to show that like this is what you do <laughs> on the keyframers all the time because I like this I'm like how how did, how did you just know to do that? Uh, it yeah it it comes down to kind of understanding the way that browser the browsers handle these these animations a little bit mm -hmm. um, and and knowing that anything that happens like for a frame is then uh, then triggers like additional stuff with with the browser. So just removing the animation for one frame and then and then resetting tells the browser this animation actually needs to rerun. So uh, that that really uh, is is a handy handy trick. Yeah, that's a really good one. You can also do this like with a class toggle or something like that. Like if you have, you know, loading animation uh, and you, you know, changed a data attribute or you added a loading class or something like that, you can uh, set animation none for a moment and then and then remove that uh, the next frame and and the browser will re-trigger the the animation. Very cool. So, yeah, fun fun tip for you. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn more things on for this because it's fun for me. That is fun how it like kind of changes the the amount of rotation based on that. It's just that's a wait, if I do the sign, we'll do the same thing. It, yeah. See that that's what I was yeah. See that's what I was going for. I, I had oh, the wrong fun. the wrong value in there. So actually if we if we move this value up, I think that'll be kind of what we were going for. Let's see. Let's oh wow, that gets intense. Yeah. <laughs> and this is just CSS. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fun to play around with and, and figure out like the yeah, the order of it and, and yeah. how it's gonna affect Now it. this seems yeah, this seems good. Like it's it's not not a violent spin, but it's got some it's got some character. Um For sure. yeah, I like this. Could even probably go a little bit 
milder on that, maybe a three quarter turn. Mm -hmm. Damn. Nice. This is fun. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, cool. So I think that just about puts us at time. Um. Stephen, thank you so much for for coming on. This was this was an absolute blast. I am never ceases to amaze me how much you can do with just CSS. Uh, I feel like we, uh, especially you know, folks in my camp where we work in in JavaScript frameworks, and so you know, it's a, it, it's that very much like we have a hammer and everything becomes a nail. So um, without having to reach for a JavaScript animation library, without having to reach for um, you know heavy heavy dependencies, we're able to just drop in a little bit of a helper with splitting JS, and then do all of this amazing stuff using only CSS. Well, that, that's that's what we try to try to showcase with with keyframers is they're they're not they're not separate things like these are these are friends <laughs> essentially like JavaScript and CSS should work together and that's especially where uh, where CSS variables come in handy it's it's essentially like uh, JavaScript handing something off to the CSS like saying hey this is a you know certain value that you need to that you need to take care of rather than the JavaScript trying to like re-trigger all this uh, animation stuff every frame. Like, no, hand that off to the CSS and let the CSS handle that with the built-in browser stuff so that you don't uh, have to worry about anything uh, like performance-wise or don't mm -hmm. worry as much about the performance of it. Right, and now like this this sort of thing, um, the the amount of work that CSS is doing is significantly lower than that that, that JavaScript would require, right? Right. Like even even if we don't account for the fact that like we're not downloading extra kilobytes of, of JavaScript or having to parse extra kilobytes of JavaScript to run this, just the the right. actual work for CSS to animate versus JavaScript is is lower. Right, and it it really boils down to like what are you doing? And uh, there there's a lot of areas that JavaScript and CSS are going to be about as equally performant, but the browser is able to handle a CSS animation or a CSS transition so much more uh readily than, yeah uh than like having to reparse everything uh each frame which is essentially what what uh javascript is going to be doing under mm -hmm. the hood yeah and, and if you think about how this will affect your um you know your your performance times in like a lighthouse audit or um some of those metrics that are are kind of tricky to pin down when you're using a lot of javascript like time to interactive or, um, or like how long you're blocking the main thread before things are actually able to use maximum input delay. Like CSS does not influence those factors. So yeah. if you move a lot of your interactivity and your animation into this layer, you're also going to see performance increases and and better, like not just the metrics, because like obviously the metrics are important because they signal something, but like you're not gaming metrics. It's not like you're moving the problem. It, you're actually solving the problem if you move a lot of your your animations into this approach, um, because you're just you're literally doing less work. It's going to make a better experience for the for the people on the other end of the line. And how's browser support for this? Like when when we get into this, how like where does this start to break down as we go back in time? Uh, CSS variables. That, that's a good question. Uh, I forget uh, what the what the cutoff is. Uh, CSS custom properties. I'm looking up. Can I use really mm. quick? Um, I'll I'll drop a link too. Uh, yeah, uh, there it is in the chat. Uh, so, going back all the way uh, to Edge 15, you've got CSS variable support, um, at, at least in some capacity. And then uh, Firefox 31, Chrome 49, um, probably even before that. And and so we're we're talking probably uh, six to eight years of of support overall mm -hmm. um it, some somewhere in that in that range uh so it, it's it's not it's not like a brand new thing it's just a very underutilized thing uh and the the beauty of it is it fails gracefully if, that's fair if you can you can totally add like just a fallback property or a fallback animation and then if data doesn't come through from the from the javascript or the css variable isn't supported then it's just going to be whatever the you know default for that property is, or there's no animation, which is a totally acceptable uh, fallback. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. Like especially for our what we built today, right? Like it's a fun interactive thing. It's going to add a little bit of like, wow, that was nice. 
But if it didn't work and it just showed the SVG and the text, that's perfectly usable. Yeah. And so yeah, it's as, not like this as long breaks as the user on is getting the content. Like that's the important thing. Mm -hmm. And then the animation, it's not icing on the cake because it can be so much more than that. But it's it's not essential to the delivery of the content. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it can help a lot with the with the way that users uh, read and parse that content. Excellent. All right. So Stephen, where should uh, where should people go to find you if they want to see more of your work online? Uh, so twitter.com slash shashaw, S-H-S-H-A-W um, is, a, is a great spot to find me. Uh, and then I've, I do- I've definitely pronounced that in my head as like a shashaw every time. Shashaw. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know when that started uh, picking up, I guess about the time I started uh, pronouncing my name and things like this. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's, that's just always been the most logical way to explain it. S-H-S-H-A-W doesn't just roll off the tongue. That's, yeah, uh, that's but fair. anyway, uh, I also do the, the keyframers uh, each week with David Korshid. Uh, you can find us at keyframers on, on uh, Twitter and Twitch. Uh, and then uh, keyframe.rs is our, is our website. And uh, yeah, you can find me releasing cool stuff on, on CodePen as well. Uh, and what is your, features. should, should I link to the keyframers page or to your individual one or? Oh, on actual CodePen, uh, probably releasing more under under keyframers right now. So that's codepen.io slash team slash keyframers. Um, that's a great spot to to find our our work there. All our code demos that we that we live code. And this is a this is a very cool like if you haven't seen keyframers, um, the the format of the show is that that Stephen and David Korshid will try to recreate or they'll try to build something together, and it ranges from like. Sometimes David's playing piano while Steven is coding an audio visualization, or they'll find something cool on Dribble that's like a, a not code, just like an animation, and they'll recreate it in code. Um, it's a really, really cool format. I've learned a lot by watching it. It's, it's. I would highly recommend checking it out. It's a lot of fun. Um, so well, cool. Any anywhere else that you want to drop before we wrap it up? I think that's about it. Go All right. throw on CodePen. For sure. <laughs> yes, GoPro on CodePen. I, I just did, and uh, it allowed us to do like this collab mode. We've got the, um, it, there's some other stuff that I want to play with, like presenter mode, where I'll be able to, I think, share a link with the, the chat so they can watch along without, yes. uh, without these, these naughty hackers actually messing with the code. Um, so some, some really fun stuff there. And I think with that, we're going to call this one done. So, Stephen, thank you so, so much for coming on. Chat, stay you tuned. You hackers, you, you dirty hackers. <laughs> you hackers, stay tuned. We're going to raid somebody else, and you can try to get their secrets. And we will see you soon. Check the schedule. We've got fun things coming up. I think Ryan is the next one scheduled, uh, but I'm working on getting a whole bunch more into the calendar. We just booked a whole lot of exciting people, including Rachel Andrew, who is going to teach us CSS Grid. So I'm really, really excited about that gonna get that all figured out definitely i'm gonna stop talking so uh yeah thank you everybody we'll see you next time